throw some trend stuns on him if I want. I can do anything I want to him and it's off DR, which is really good. So that's the opener for part one. There's a different kind of opener you can have as a Feral Druid too. The other opener is just open on the target that you're going on purely and do a lot of damage to him in the opener. So that requires Glyph of Savage Roar, so I'm just going to mimic that by keeping Savage Roar up. What you're going to want to do is keep Pounce. I usually leap to the target. You Pounce, Rake, I usually Mangle, Shred, Shred, Rip. That should be your thing. Just So just Pounce, Rake, as many combo points to get to 5, and then Rip. That's a basic consistent damage opener if you're saving your tires for your for burst. <laughs> this is the the biggest opener you can have right here. So if you guys want to do a lot of damage on your opener, like the most possible, this is what you're gonna do. This is a training dummy. Okay, so you're playing with Glyph of Savage Aura, so I'm gonna mimic that really quickly. I'm gonna get some comp points and get Savage Aura up. Okay, so you're playing with Glyph of Savage Aura, you have Savage Aura. What you're gonna do to do the most, this is the most damage possible to do in your opener. You're gonna pounce. Rake, Shred, Tiger's Fury, Ravage, Rip. And that's the most damage you can possibly do in your opener. It's, it's actually a lot. It's pretty insane. So I can do that one again because it's probably one people want. Trents are a lot better than Incarnation. Macro Page or something like that? Yeah, maybe. Alright, so the big opener I have to do again in 30 seconds, otherwise it doesn't work because I need Tiger's Fury. So I'm mimicking Tiger's Fury right now, or the Glyph of Savage Roar by having it up. So what you're going to do is Pounce, Rake, Shred, Tiger's Fury, Ravage, and uh, Rip. That's your opener. That's the biggest opener you can do. And then spam Shreds and then get another Tiger's Fury up. Maybe Rec will watch this, I'm not sure. Anyway, so those are the openers you can have. You can have the potential, you know, pounce one, switch to the other. You could have your regular consistent pressure opener, and then you can have your, like, the hardest opener in the game. So those are the three different kind of openers that you can utilize in a game. Specifically, I like opening just with the start on one guy, just pounce, rake, shred, get a couple combo points, get Savage Roar of him, and then switch to the other target. That's my favorite opener because it kind of slows them down a little bit, but the big damage one is good for cleaves and whatnot. So, I guess the next thing I can talk about is how to do damage as a Feral Druid. I'm not sure how many people know how to do that, so yeah, damage as a Feral Druid. As a Feral Druid, doing damage is actually a lot easier than people think. People just kind of overcomplicate it maybe, don't know what they're doing with their buttons, don't know what their buttons do as a Feral Druid. So, when you're playing a Feral Druid, one thing that I recommend for starter Feral Druids to never use is this thing called Ferocious Bite. Ferocious Bite is dog shit. If you don't know what you're doing for Ferocious Bite, you're going to screw yourself up. It's like, it's like a chef cooking something really difficult. If like they can cook it well, it'll taste really good, but if you're not able to, it'll taste like shit. Like That's basically Ferocious Bite. If you know how to use well, you can utilize it really strongly. If not, you're going to end up fucking yourself in the end. So, what is a really good thing to do on consistent pressure that a lot of ferals don't know about is just forget about Tiger's Fury for a minute. Just forget about it. What you're going to do is you're going to go on your target, get a 5 comma point of Savage Roar, and just keep going with your regular DPS rotation. So just keep break up, shred, shred till you get 5, and then get a rip up. So that's all you're literally doing the entire time. It's really, really easy. This is how I do my consistent damage when I'm setting up for kills, is just to keep this up, but always make sure you're keeping this off cooldown. Don't use Tiger's Fury for your consistent pressure. It's a waste. It's your burst cooldown. So literally, just keep your Savage Roar, and your rip up, you can do around a four point savage roar, that's fine if you don't want to waste the extra combo point, it's more efficient, but always make sure to do a five point rip. It's much more effective than a four point. Four point rip does 100,000, five point does 132k, so it's really a lot stronger. So literally, I'm not doing anything but other than keeping this up and rip up. It's a lot of damage, it's surprisingly a lot, and you're keeping your tigers free and your ravage open for burst opportunities, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. So yeah, just keep doing that. Savage Roar, rip, most important things. Not very difficult. Yeah. And if you find yourself having an... You should never have an excess amount of combo points if you're not using Tiger's Fury or doing that, ever. So that's another really important thing. I'm putting my eyes... Anyways, so... That's consistent. A thing that a lot of guys don't know how to do about is how to do like a 200k quick versus Fail Druid. 
Because Feral Dude actually has that potential and a lot of people don't know about it, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that quickly. It's not difficult. So go ahead, get your combo points, whatever, get your Savage Roar going, and then you're going to work on getting full bleeds. So this is the biggest possible burst you can do ever in the game as a Feral Druid, in my opinion, that's quick. It's not easy to set up, it does take time to set up, and in a game it can happen randomly depending on your clear casting procs that you get, but anyways, this is the most damage you can do as a Feral Druid. So you have your Savage Roar, you have a decent left on your rip, what you're going to do is get around 3 combo points, Tiger's Fury, Ravage, Ferocious Bite. So I'll show you the damage log of that really quickly. And I'll explain it while I go. So you have your consistent pressure going, which I showed earlier, which is just the Savage Roar and your rip. And literally all it is, is I have my bleed sticking, my shred hitting, but as soon as I do my burst, it comes up right here as soon as my Ravage hit. Ravage hits for 226k. And then literally my next global, Ferocious Bite hits for 125k crit. So that's a lot of damage in two buttons. That's a combined total of like 370k. When taken into consideration PvP result of reducing that, it ends up usually coming out at about 150k burst, which is still really strong when all your bleeds are ticking for like 20k a tick. So that's the most damage you can do as a Feral Dude right now in burst. I'll show you guys that again. Uh, a lot of people don't know about that. It's pretty insane. So that's why I always save my tires for you. Like when I say I'm bursting, I like really mean I'm like kind of globaling the target. So. Just attacking this guy right now. Getting my full bleeds up, having Savage Roar up. So I have full bleeds, a decent time left on Savage Roar. Now I'm just working getting three combo points. That's all you need to do this. Three combo points with these two things up and you can go. So I have 24 seconds left on Ravage, 10 seconds left on my rip. So I have the five combo points. Brocious Bite, Ravage. There's the damage again. It was pretty much the same. Ravage hits for 210k. Ferocious Bite hits for 111k, didn't even crit. So yeah, that's your burst as a Feral Druid. Sometimes, that's why I global rogues. It's literally that burst. So that's a really good thing to do as a Feral Druid, is always remember that you have that burst potential. And you can literally, you don't even need to have that big of a setup. That's the biggest setup you can get, but you can also do a burst like that really quickly on a swap. I'll show you what I mean. So you get your combo points or whatever. You're gonna say swap to the shaman. You're gonna do a big swap to the shaman. You have you just make sure all you need is a savage roar and a full energy bar. You do a quick switch to the shaman. You put up a rake. That's the most important thing. Three combo points. Savage roar or a tiger's fury sh ravage ferocious bite. I'll show you the damage log of that. So that wasn't a swap. So that swap took me about six or seven globals to get off. So that's about three to four seconds. And I did a ravage for 211k and a ferocious bite for 100k. Yeah. So Ravage for 290k, Ferocious Bite for 111k. That's really, really strong, in my opinion, for just a quick swap. Actually, it might have been less. Let's see. No, yeah, 189k, and then 122k. So you can do a lot of damage on a swap as a Feral Druid. Just knowing how to do it might be a little bit tricky. So yeah, just for a switch, all you need is Savage or doesn't even have to be a long point, it can be 23 points, just switch, rake, tire sphere instantly isn't always bad, just get your thing up, ravage, ferocious bite, it's a lot of damage, like you saw 254k there, 254k, and 111k, so that's 360k again in a swap, modified by results, over 100k damage in two globals, so yeah, that's how to do damage as a feral druid. Those are all the different types of way. Consistent pressure, burst pressure, uh, openers. So yeah, that's damage. And then I'll talk about these. I'll talk about talents next. Starting with first tier. Moving on. Uh, yeah, I'll VOD this. Alright, so for talents, uh, you have your 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. I'm going to move this over if I can. I can't move it over. Alright, I'll just move my webcam. One second. Move this. Okay, so you have your talent. So the first thing you're gonna do is your first one is your first tier. You have your kind of like mobility tree. So you have feral feline swiftness, displacer beast, and wild charge. The only truly optimal one to use in this is wild charge because you have this thing that's called intervene, which is a leap back to your healer, 
and it's really important because if your healer is getting trapped you can shift out and press it and you leap to the target and you're on the trap so that's a really important macro another really important uh, one is the bear root it's a four second root that's undispellable so if a, tar if a melee targets on your other person on your team you can bear root them off and you can also charge to the healer if you need to it's, it's just a really 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 um, ability that you can utilize in a lot of different ways that's really strong uh, for the next tier the only really option right now is Nature Swiftness. Dream of Scenarius, or Scenarium Ward is another option, but Nature Swiftness is truly your best option because NS Heal alone does around like 100k in Arena. It's on you, it's probably going to be around 80k on your partner, it's going to be about 60k, but if you heart of the wild with it, it can literally top a teammate in one, in one heal. So Nature Swiftness is definitely the right option for this tier. You can also NS Cyclone, which is really strong because having a Cyclone on demand with no proc required can also be extremely overpowered if you're trying to stop something. Scenarian Ward does have its uses as it heals for around 100k every time you use it and it's the 30 seconds. So versus like a dot cleave or something, this can keep someone up through the dots. So it's also fairly strong, but I would recommend Nature Swiftness. Uh, next tier, the only option is Typhoon. The other two kind of, they're all right, but having a 30 yard range knockback interrupt that daze is a target as well, so it's also a slow, and it's AoE is super strong. It can stop uh, Hunter's Zoo by knocking it back and dazing it. It can stop heals. You can knock people off edges. You can stop casts like Cyclone, Polymorph, Interrupt, an a like a or a Master Healer. You can do a lot with Typhoon, and I just think it's a great utilizing ability. Just another interrupt, really. Um, the next thing that's really good is Force of Nature, um, or the next tree is Force of Nature, like. This is the tree that a lot of people have debating about. Soul of the Forest, Incarnation, and Force of Nature, so I'm going to spend a little time on this one. A lot of people don't know, but Force of Nature is incredibly strong right now. And what I mean by that is Force of Nature is a 3 second stun, and you have 3 of them. So, basically, you can literally triple stun a team, and I'll show you guys what I mean by this. So, just say this is the enemy team right here. This one, this one, and this one. I'll have this guy on focus. I'll be attacking this guy and this will be the healer. If I want to peel everyone, I can just do this really quickly. And they're all stunned. Like, it's really, really easy to get off. And a three second stun is a pretty big thing. So it's basically like Shadow Dance cheap shot every minute, or you get one every 20 seconds. That's not the only thing that's really, really good about it. The fact that you can stop an entire enemy team at the same time. Another really, really good thing about it is it's off the global cooldown. And what I mean by that is this. So I'm DPSing this target. It's the Warlock. And if I want to, what I can do is I can stun this Warlock. And I can full bash on the healer while doing damage at range. And it's a 40 yard range. So that means uh, any range that someone can cast a cast at, you can try and stun them if you're in range. So it's extremely strong because if you guys have ever played against a Hunter in Arena and your healer has been cc for days by silencing shot and scatter shot and everything this is basically the equivalent of it for feral druid it's really overpowered if i want i can just stun people constantly like that and it's really really good it is on dr for other stuns so what i usually like to do is stun the dps with bash and then triple stun the healer into full cyclone something like that you can get a lot of pressure and the other options of course are incarnation and soul of the forest uh, so ignoring trend stun for now, we can basically stop everything with trend stun. Incarnation is your kind of damage cooldown. I'd say it, it increases your damage by about 20% while it's up. So obviously what it lets you do is spam ravage and spam pounce and spam restealth. And what this is is basically you can ravage for, I think it's 45 energy every time you want to. And that basically does 20% more damage than shred. So you're just doing a lot more damage, but it, the thing is, it's a 3 minute cooldown, which is really long compared to a 20 second stun. So, you're giving up about 20% damage every 3 minutes for a stun every 20 seconds, which you can do multiple things with, which in my opinion is more useful. But, on the other hand, with Incarnation, you also get to re-stealth, which is really good for dropping focus. You get to pounce, which is an unparryable, dodgeable stun, which is really strong as well. So, you're not really... Beginner Feral should use Incarnation because it's just easier to use, it's more fluid in your play. Trend Stun is a little hard to get used to because you're constantly switching focus and bashing different people. But Incarnation is great for starting Feral Druids because you're able to do more damage on your burst to get the kill. The next good thing is Soul of the Forest. Soul of the Forest is your consistent damage button. Like You, you will do the most damage output with Soul of the Forest, but this game is about burst right now so I don't overly recommend it. Maybe in 2 sometime, but even then. If you're good enough to be using Soul of the Forest, you should just be using Trends. So, the two options are Advanced Fail Druid should try using Trends and getting used to them.
beginner feral you choose incarnation and just get used to doing feral things and bursting every three minutes. So that's that tier. How do you control the stun? Uh, the stun 